Um, now, another question here. Last one I'm going to do. Uh, can athletes, also from Adam, by the way, can athletes get around the negative effects of high sugar consumption because they are more active? Uh, the short answer is yes. So a lot of the med like cardiometabolic concerns about sugar are largely related to very high intakes of fructose, aside from just being in very positive energy balance. Uh, but fructose does get a little bit more consideration, a little bit more attention because fructose is metabolized uh, differently than other monosaccharides. So fructose uh, is mostly metabolized in the liver, which can definitely cause some issues. Uh, and one of the issues is there's kind of just like this bottleneck effect of all these substrates going to the liver. Um, you know, it's just this overload of you know, carbohydrate and de novo lipogenesis occurring there and uh, being in an, in an energy surplus with a tremendous amount of fructose, that's all kind of going to the liver and not causing uh, great things when it comes to cardiometabolic health. Um, now, the reason I bring that up is because if you are physically active and exercising, uh, you know, when we look at sedentary folks that are on a a very high fructose diet, we will see hepatic de novo lipogenesis. So de novo lipogenesis in the liver. We'll see increases in uh, fat storage within the liver. Uh, we'll see increases in blood trigl uh, triglyceride concentrations uh, and uh, also an impairment of insulin sensitivity. So those are the types of cardiometabolic issues that we're looking at. That's in sedentary folks who are in positive energy balance with a, a pretty notable influx of really deliberately high fructose. If you are active exercising, that is clearing a lot of those substrates out of your liver. There's a lot of energy flux going on. Substrates are coming in. They're being utilized. That's a good thing. Substrates come in, substrates go out. Can't explain that. You can't, uh, and, and I won't. But... <laughs> There, there is a study um, that, that kind of looked at this exact question. Um, and if anything, the study undersells uh, the safety mechanisms for the typical healthy, active person. But the study was by Smajis and colleagues in 2020, titled Metabolic Effects of a Prolonged, Very High Dose uh, Dietary Fructose Challenge in Healthy Subjects. And that's when you know that it's a pretty serious intervention when they're not even calling it a high fructose diet, it's a high fructose challenge. That means the fructose is pretty high. So in this particular study, they were looking at 150 grams of fructose daily, which would be like 300 grams of table sugar on a daily basis, uh, the, the fructose equivalent. Uh, looked at 10 healthy subjects um, after eight weeks of adhering to this. That's a pretty substantial amount of time That's to have. That's a lot have that much fructose and these are are healthy folks but they're not like you know running 15 miles a week or anything like that it's just healthy folks who are not deliberately eating in a you know a, a caloric surplus and basically body weight decreased slightly during the study uh none of the outcomes they looked at related to uh the liver or metabolic health were significantly impacted uh in a negative way so if, if you have um you know if your body composition is within a healthy range for you and you're uh quite active and you're not in a large energy surplus you know dealing with sugar even if it's pure fructose in this example doesn't seem to be uh much of a challenge at all doesn't seem to be much of a problem so uh for someone who's relatively lean and exercising regularly uh it, it is really not something that is worth uh being too concerned about as long as sugar is not displacing other important stuff from your diet but you know the the anecdotal evidence for this is quite abundant as well um I don't know many people who have more sugar than the typical endurance athlete who's putting in pretty high mileage. Um, you know, we're not seeing a lot of endurance athletes coming in with, you know, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or, you know, metabolic syndrome or, or things like that. So absolutely, uh, if you're active and especially if you maintain relatively lean body composition and you're not in a huge caloric surplus, 
uh, you can certainly get around some of those negative effects of high sugar consumption. 